it's a positive thing though it gives you some kind of stress because your promotion requires more responsibilities from you so your responsibility is another one distress for example death of someone in a family an accident it leads to negative note so that's a distress so in psychology when we say stress is a feeling of emotional strain and pressure it can be positive either or negative positive stress helps improve athletic performance even when a student is taken from our school for an athletic competition we tell him before the competition see we want first prize once he starts even though there is a stress in him but his goal is very clear and this small minor stress helps him or inspires him to put an extra effort into that in china chinese language the word stress sorry the word crisis it comes from two chinese words danger and opportunity so it's an event that is expected to lead to an unstable and dangerous situation affecting an individual or a group what are the characteristics of crisis first of all it's an unexpected event second one it creates uncertainty without explanation it goes my dear colleagues because quite often when the parents ring us and they are asking when will you reopen the school and our answer is i'm sorry dear parent i'm sorry my dear brother i'm unable to give you a date because it's uncertain the community spread is it is a, is at its zenith second one third one crisis is seen as a threat to important goals we have or every institution or organization or a firm or a company is having its organizational goals and when a crisis comes it's a threat to achieve its goals the fourth characteristic of crisis is it leads to a process of transformation that also you you understand very clearly what it is from traditional classroom teaching we are undergoing a period of transition and transformation to online education this is just an example yes as it was mentioned in the welcome note crisis it has got three stages one is pre crisis in fact we were all very much scared anxious and we were embarrassed we didn't know what will happen what's going to happen then the crisis came it's there now now we are looking forward to post crisis what will be the consequences of what's happening or what will happen here what's more important is the crisis management it's very important see crisis as i told it can have negative impact as well as positive impact if winter comes can spring be far behind if there is a bad time of course one good time is waiting for us so one who knows how to manage the crisis in an effective and in a productive way he succeeds he wins you know sir ken robinson who passed away recently and there were long articles about him he was a great educationist he was a great motivational speaker he was a psychologist he was an academician and he said it attracted me a lot what he said the gardener does not make a plant grow the job of a gardener is to create optimal conditions we are professionals we are teachers or trainers or leaders we don't make the student grow but what do we do 
we create optimal conditions for the growth and development of each and every student. If this aspect enters into everyone's mind, purpose is served. There is a person, you might have heard of him, Warren Edward Buffy. Warren Edward. He is an American investor. He's a great business tycoon. He's a philanthropist. He's the chairman and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. It's a big establishment and enterprise. He is the most successful, or we, I can say he is one of the most successful investors worth US dollar 78.9 billion as of July 2020. He stands world's seventh wealthiest person. Why did I give you all this introduction about this person? Once he said in one of his remarkable speeches, he mentioned about three qualities that an individual should have, whether you are a teacher, whether you are a non-teacher, whether you are a professional, non-professional, skilled, unskilled, whatever is there, irrespective of that, if you are an employee, let us come to that level. Let's forget that we are principals and uh, high professionals. But if you are an employee, you should have three things, intelligence, energy and integrity. Please note it down, my dear friends. Intelligence, energy and integrity. We should tell our colleagues, we should tell our teachers about these three qualities. And what he told from his experience, one of the most important investors in the world, look for three things in a person. Intelligence, energy, and integrity and if they don't have the last one what is that integrity don't even bother with the first two if an individual if an employee if a professional does not have integrity in his life in his character don't bother whether he's intelligent or energetic or smart or handsome or whatever he is forget it we as professionals. Please, it's the time for a self-examination. Am I having the virtue and quality of integrity? Am a person, am I a person of high integrity? Give a thought to me. As principles, see, I think most of you or all the participants are principles, mostly maybe 99%. Am I right, Dr. Silas? Yes, or yes, are yes. all the participants are principals? Yes, yes, all, almost all. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Right, okay. So, we might always be coming across the teachers and we label them, isn't it? Maybe knowingly or unknowingly, we label the teachers. Oh, that teacher is a playful teacher. This teacher is a lazy teacher. That teacher is a corrupt teacher. This teacher is an archaic teacher. That teacher is a strict teacher. This teacher is a teacher with high quality. <clears throat> and this particular teacher is a teacher for the future. <clears throat> we want a teacher for the future. We are not looking for a strict teacher who is a strict disciplinary and running a jail room. We are looking for a teacher who is ever evolving teacher a teacher who is interested in the professional development, a teacher who is always updating with the latest technology, a principal who is looking always with the latest teaching methodology, burning with the passion and compassion, equipped with the skills to deliver quality all around academic experience. 21st century teacher with focus on self-development, self-improvement, ready to abide by the three domains of learning, cognitive, affective, and psychomotor, three major domains of learning. As a teacher, see, I always, whenever I talk to my colleagues in the school, I always tell, see, you are in this school for two purposes. It should be always there in your mind. One, first one, number one, self-development. 
you should not tell that I came to this school to make the school grow and develop. Aren't you bothered about your own development? Aren't you really bothered about your own growth, your own improvement, your own professional development? It should be the number one because when they focus on their self-development, of course, that is going to affect positively in their professional life. Second one, the institutional development. I'm sure, my dear friends, you will agree with me in this aspect as principals, I'm sure the teachers who are attending the professional development programs, the teachers who are voracious readers, the teachers who are doing researches, the teachers who are writing articles, the teachers who are attending CBP capacity development program by conducted by CBS and all the other agencies, third party agencies. Of course, when they are going to benefit individually, that benefit is being shared with the institution. When I tell institution, the benefit is given to the students and parents, whoever the stakeholders of the institution are. What is reality of today's education? You are we are going through a crisis. That's why I have incorporated these topics. What's the reality of today's education? Whatever happens, whatever we say that the technology is very much dominant in the society, debate is going on whether the technology can replace the teacher. Now the parents started realizing, no, teachers are important. Before, when the students were coming to the school, the parents were not sometimes, some of the parents, they were not happy with the teaching. Sometimes they were telling, Oh, no, we are not very happy with the teacher, with the teaching or the teacher and then the discipline is not there. Now parents are fed up. They are calling and telling that, see, when will the school reopen? I used to ask the, the parents, what happened? Are you fed up with your children at home? Are you not able to control your children at home? When we were having them in our school for six to eight hours, we were making them discipline. We were training them. Now they are at home with you. Are you fed up? Yes, that's true. So teachers are still the backbone of the education system because the students in the, in the past, the teachers were transferer of knowledge. Now, no, not only that, for that Google is there. A lot of software programs are there. Teacher is not that much required only to transfer knowledge but the soft skills, social skills, communication skills, innovation skills, a lot of skills are associated with every individual where a real teacher of 21st century, teacher for the future is required. With changing times come new challenges. COVID-19 scenario, maybe post, see previously in the in the pre-COVID-19 scenario, some of our teachers, they were totally ignorant about laptop operation. They were ignorant about MS Office. They did not know how to, they did not know how to edit a Word document, how to create a PPT. Now we can see, now, now we know that our teachers are experts in that. They learned it. Why? changing times come new challenges and we are ready to face hats off to my dear co-principals fellow principals to you because we trained our teachers to cope up with the situation now all the teachers are giving successful online classes then we cannot face new challenges with the same old tools we need to find new methods there comes the relevance of a great leader that is the head of the institution, the principal. Every stakeholder needs to evolve to meet the demands of change. It's not only the responsibility of the principal, we need to make the parents understand, you are one of the stakeholders in the process of teaching and learning, and you are seriously involved in this. Some major challenges faced by our teachers, like how do I move beyond traditional teaching. When we introduced online teaching, some of the teachers, they might have raised this issue. How can I move 
away from beyond from traditional teaching how do i develop activities beyond that is challenging as well as engaging the activity that you frame or design that should be challenging that should go beyond the intellectual capacity of the students and at the same time it should be engaging how do i utilize available resources how do i handle expectations of demanding parents how can i handle the expectations of demanding parents this is a major challenge faced by teachers we know that even trolls are there cartoons are there what the teacher is spending time as it happened in the beginning of our session we are asking hello hello am i audible am i visible can you listen to me so the teacher is facing a lot of problems so and another thing are they able to utilize the available resources as principals have we trained them properly are the teachers able to handle the expectations of demanding parents and how do i teach the able and challenging child in the same classroom we always say that a classroom is a mixed abilities classroom what is mixed ability there will be efficient bright students high achievers high learners and there will be low achievers and slow learners so it's a mixture of different abilities and a, and a mixture of multiple intelligences i'm not getting into the topic multiple intelligences how do i remain lifelong learner and to acquire new skills now how would you define yourself as a teacher or how would you define teaching as a profession i'll give you three dimensions three aspects and mostly most of us we belong to or the teaching community belong to either of these three number one it's a way to make a living my teaching profession or my principalship is it only a way to make a living is it a source of livelihood i tried for another job but i was not able to get another job so i thought okay i'll become a teacher there is another one a responsibility to be fulfilled i am doing all this job for example today now this session is going on and the president of central travancur sahodaya dr selas sir has told yes all principals should attend this one it's a good opportunity please join okay because i am a principal or because i am an office bearer of central travancur sahodaya i am attending this session we should ask ourselves or the third aspect which is a noble cause am i part of a greater purpose do i stand for a noble cause of educating the present generation am i molding the citizens of tomorrow when we analyze ourselves i raised all these three questions three scenarios so that we can analyze our capacity scott analysis some people call it as swot analysis also s w o t swot analysis means we know strength weakness opportunities and threats swot analysis scott analysis means strength challenges opportunities and threats so what do i mean by your strength what are the challenges in front of us as a principal how will i identify my ch the challenges in front of me what are the opportunities open in front of me how can i utilize them at the same time what are the threats to achieve my goals strength we can write down the answers if if there is a pen and paper right in front of you there is nothing wrong if you jot it down so that this will be a very good opportunity for you to find out your strength write down answers to the following questions where appropriate use similar question strength what are your advantages what do you do well for example you speak well you are a good speaker you are a good orator you are a good planner 
you are a good time manager you are a good organizer you are a person who can lace with the management and the parents you are a good mentor you are a good budget planner you are a good facilitator so what are you which aspect of yours are you able to do in its excellent manner what relevant resources do you have if you say that i am good at this one what are the relevant resources you have what do other people see as your strength at the same time think it's a time for introspection ask yourself when others appreciate me what are the things that others see in me as my strength they might say no sometimes after the meeting they are tell, coming and telling that oh ma'am nisha ma'am your speech was excellent ma'am the graduation program that you conducted oh it was well organized ma'am the annual day programs you selected the programs according to the quality so what do other people see next one challenges what could you improve when we do the sessions now we always ask okay where what are the what are the weakness in you so instead of the term weakness what i feel is challenge or room for improvement how could you improve what are the aspects that you need to improve what are the aspects that i need to improve in me for example if i am a person short tempered who is short tempered i need to improve myself because being in the position of the head of an institution it's not good to be short tempered i need to be very mild i need to solve the problems in a very soft and calm way in a balanced manner another one what do you do badly maybe my writing skill is not that much good i am not an english teacher suppose i am a mathematics teacher or i am a science or humanities teacher science or uh, mathematics evs or a social science teacher my english is not good quite often when i draft the letters i make a lot of mistakes if you feel that it's a challenge in front of you what should you avoid there are certain things you should avoid maybe the language that you use so consider this from an internal and external point of view next one opportunities what are the good opportunities facing you for example the location of your school is it in the heart of the city or what are the good opportunities facing you what are the interesting trends you are aware of useful opportunities can come from such things as changes in technology and markets on both a broad and narrow scale changes in government policy related to your field for example you are a trainer previously there was a rule by the government that if you are working in an institution as teacher or principal you are not allowed to go for training uh, candidates in, in in a private firm or a private uh, party suppose the government removes that ban takes away that ban so that is a good opportunity for you it's a good opportunity for you to develop your skill changes in social patterns population profiles lifestyle changes and local events what are the threats in front of you threats what obstacles do you face for example you want to conduct a program for the parents and grandparents of your school what are the obstacles do you face for that or in this scenario for example you want to collect the fees so that the staff can be paid properly but to collect the fees from the parents what are the obstacles that you are facing what's your competition doing are the required specifications for your job products or services changing is changing technology threatening your position suppose you are totally ignorant you are an illiterate of technology and your principal your vice principal is very good at computer ask yourself is your vice principal a threat to you only because only because 
the technology or the changing technology because you are not able to learn it or you did not take pain for that. Do you have bad debt or cash flow problems? Could any of your weaknesses seriously threaten your business or your institution? When we talk about this, see, normally it's intelligence. We talk about intelligence. And there is a person, we are going to see his details, who published a paper on intelligence. And according to him, he says that there are two types of intelligences. One is crystallized intelligence, another one fluid intelligence. Who said that? Raymond Bernard Cattell, who lived from 1905 to 1998. He's both British and American because he was born in Britain and he moved to America. He is a well-known psychologist. He published a theory in 1971 about intelligence. He told human intelligence can be divided into two. One is crystallized intelligence and second one is fluid intelligence. Can anyone throw some light on this? What do you mean by crystallized intelligence? What do you mean by fluid intelligence? Anyone? Just, um, just make a guess. There is no right answer, no wrong answer. There is no problem at all. Could you please come up? Anyone? It's an open call. Hello, sir. Hello, ma'am. Yes, please. Hello. Anyone? No issues. Maybe you are a bit hesitant. You are thinking that if you give the answer and the answer is wrong, what will other principals think of you? They won't think anything of you. If you know something, you can tell. If there is something wrong, no worries. No problem at all. See, this is one of the issues what we face when we are having staff meeting, when we are training them. And when the teachers are going to the class, the same issue is faced by, by them. Even when during online classes, the teachers are asking questions. If it's an open call, nobody is giving answer. If it's an individualized question, people will answer. Nisha ma'am is there. I know only Nisha ma'am's and Silas's names. That's why I'm calling her name. Sorry for that. Please don't feel bad about it. Nisha ma'am, are you there? No worries. Please. Yes, sir. So shall I? Yeah, please, please. Thank you. Yeah, please tell me yes, if sir, from I the think, word, if you get some meaning, please make a guess. Yeah, I think fluid intelligence and crystallized intelligence, that means that the ability to solve the problems. Thank you. That is fluid intelligence. What yeah. about second one? First one, crystallized. Crystallized, crystallized means maybe like uh, basic thing, basic like ability to solve some like basic problems or to clear 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 the problems something like that maybe oh, that's like fine that that sounds good man thank you so much thank you so much right okay yes when should we when should we conclude mr prasit could you please tell me the deadline the time is a four o'clock after our plan by four okay PM. fine yeah. fine 358 i'll conclude fine, okay. sir. perfect thank you so much thank you now Crystallized intelligence and fluid intelligence. We are coming back to that. Okay, you your mind is fresh now and we are coming back to the topic crystallized and fluid intelligence. Why am I telling you about these two intelligences? Because as principals, some of us are having crystallized intelligence and we are not ready to change. Whereas we need to move from the to another scenario. Please look at it. What's the difference between fluid intelligence and crystallized intelligence? Fluid intelligence, let's read out about fluid intelligence first. No, sorry. Let, let's see the second column first. Crystallized intelligence. Please see the second column. Crystallized intelligence is the ability to use learned knowledge and experience. Whatever we have learned from our books or from our experience, the knowledge and skill that we are already having we are having the ability to reproduce it or to reuse it. When an issue comes, I assess or I solve the issue with the existing knowledge from my reading and experience. 
This is crystallized intelligence. Second aspect, the ability, what is crystallized intelligence? It's the ability to make use of acquired knowledge, knowledge of facts. Whatever factual knowledge is there in you, you have the ability to use. Now moving to the first column, fluid intelligence. <clears throat> As the word says, it's in its fluid state. The other one, crystallized state. Fluid state, what happens? Ability to solve new problems, my dear. Fluid intelligence is the ability to solve new problems, not from the pages of the textbook that you have read, not from the knowledge that someone shared with you, but the flexibility that you should have while sorting out a problem. Fluid intelligence, again, it's fluid intelligence uses logic in new situations. Let me tell you something. Yesterday I was attending a session, it was an orientation session, and I'm sure Mr. Jonichan Paul, the sales executive of Alapura Region uh, Password Publishing House is online. Yesterday, <clears throat> he was about to call me around 7.30 or so. Mr. Prasid told me. So I told Mr. Prasid, please, you can, if you don't mind, please call me after 8.30. Because 7 to 8.30 was my orientation for NEET exam. Our school is center, and most of you will be having your school as center. And there, uh, maybe I don't know whether I was surprised or many people got surprised. Some of the people, some people, some uh, center superintendents and deputy superintendents, they were asking certain questions which may arise in certain situations. Now, we know there is no hard and fast rule for all of your questions. That's why we believe God has given us prudence. And every solution varies from case to case. Whatever is applicable in Crescent Public School, Chalakudi may not be applicable to Patanamdita School, Newman. It may not be applicable in Devamada School, Trishur. It may not be applicable in another school or college. So it depends upon case by case. And when you are having fluid intelligence, you have the logic to use in new situations and identify patterns. Fluid intelligence is having working memory capacity. Dear principals and dear participants, this is one of the aspects I would like to underline. I would like to re-emphasize. Our intelligence sometimes is very much crystallized, narrow-minded, a traditional principle we are. We are very much highly focusing on discipline, disciplinarian, isn't it? I'm sure uh, all of you belong to Kerala and you have watched a movie eh, where Tilagan is the mathematics teacher and he says that, he says what? Logam karanganadu kanakkilana mathematics ganidathilana ganidathashastrathilana. He's telling that. And for him, he cannot think beyond the circle of mathematics. <clears throat> Typical example of crystallized intelligence. This new scenario, <clears throat> this new scenario, whether it is COVID-19 or post-crisis even, we need to change from crystallized intelligence to fluid intelligence. I'm not telling you to totally remove because even acquired knowledge is very important in achieving the organizational goals. Whereas, wherever flexibility is required, we need to do that. <clears throat> yes. See, previously the psychologists were telling, I'm doing my, so just for your kind information, dear friends, I told, I was mentioning that we should be lifelong learners and I'm one of the examples for that. I'm doing my MSc in Applied Psychology, finally or now. I'm very much eager to learn many things. And of course, we know it's not to get any promotion or there will be no pay increment once you finish your study, no. But we should update ourselves. We should be lifelong learners. When you tell your students this aspect that I am doing a course now, I'm also a student. You see the brightness, the life in their eyes. They are asking or the parents will ask, who? Oh, you are studying even at this age. 
as if you are 60 or 70 years. We are quite young at heart. We are quite young at mind. So I'm telling you, no, I'm not too old to learn. There is no age bar to learn something. So I'm doing my course. So when we are, see, dear friends, you also please register for some short term course, some certificate course, some diploma course. I'll tell you why. When you learn something, when you prepare something, you will really find out the difficulties faced by a student. On the day of the exam, the students are pressurized. If you are not a student, you can see only from the angle of a principal or a teacher. You'll think that, oh, why should you be under pressure? The teacher has prepared you very well and you should be very bold and confident. No, I'm telling you, one, I am <clears throat> working as the principal. I'm an experienced person still on the day of the exam morning i don't feel like having a good breakfast or heavy breakfast because my focus is my exam morning as soon as i get up immediately i'll just refer to the points that i have written in my short notes having very light breakfast very something light and going as soon as i reach there immediately stop the vehicle sitting in the car and referring to to the portion that i read what i'm telling is if we are studying something we can exactly know the pulse of a student then so fluid intelligence okay the attention span sorry I'm, i was uh, talking about that so attention span previously the psychologist used to say that it is 10 to 15 minutes that is the attention span of a student as per the study in 2000 it has come back to eight minutes that is the attention span of a human being and in 2018, the psychological studies and researchers say that three to four minutes is the attention span of an individual in the modern period. We can experience that. Now I am talking to you. Continuously, more than three to four minutes, you cannot concentrate, concentrate on me. Maybe you might be thinking something else immediately. Maybe sometimes when my tone goes up or goes, when it varies, Maybe your attention is again caught by me. So this aspect should be there in our mind. When we train our teachers, when we teach in our class, we should know that the real attention span of my student is three to four minutes. If I need to get their attention more, I need to prepare, I need to polish my teaching technology. Right. Fluid intelligence is the capacity to learn new information. This is by Andrea Kuzelski, yes, he's telling that. It's the capacity to learn new information, seek novelty, and change yourself and think creatively. So these are the things about fluid intelligence. And Dr. Sternberg, he was the former dean of Tufts University. What does he say? He says, you have abilities. You are telling that I'm able to speak. I'm able to plan an event. I'm able to do tech, 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 all these things I'm able to do. This is not enough, man. You are having abilities, sir. Madam, you are having abilities until and unless these abilities are turned into competencies. We are not going to be an efficient principal or official professional. We need to shift from ability to competency. Because competency is totally different, ability is totally different. Then from competency, we need to be expert in every field. Another aspect to become an efficient principal is prioritizing. Most of us might be doing that. And if you are not doing, it's high time to do that. It's a skill that you need to create calmness and space in your life so that you can focus your energy and attention on the things that really matter. We have everyday business. In the morning, we plan for certain things that, okay, I need to do these, these things in the morning as I reach the school. There will be unexpected things, responsibilities that will be coming on the way. And if you are able to prioritize the things or the events, the to-do list. You will be a successful person. The first line it is written, you need to create calmness and space. Prioritizing will create calmness in you. You will get mental peace. It is particularly important when time is limited. If we have limited time, 
and demands are seemingly unlimited. It helps you to allocate your time where it is most needed and most wisely spent and freeing you from less important tasks. So there will be important task, unimportant task. Urgent task, not urgent task. Four categories our tasks can be divided. One is important, unimportant. Another one, urgent and not urgent. Now the first one will be important and urgent. That is the prioritized one. Important and urgent. First thing. Now I give you one example. Now when I was getting ready for this session at 2.29, maybe you noticed that I attended a phone call. That was from a person who has taken a tender for a third party tender for neat exam. He called me and he was start. He was discussing with me that the what is it the arrangement, the security guard and the female people who will be coming for frisking and other thing. As soon as he started, I told, please excuse me. Can I give you a call after four thirty? He asked, what happened? I told, I'm sorry. I'm just waiting for a webinar to start. I'm just giving you a very simple example from my life. What I'm telling. That time, my priority is to get ready to mentally and physically get settled for this session. I did not want to rush for the session, talking to him for two, three minutes and asking you, pardon, I'm sorry for being late and all. No, I don't want to apologize for that. So there will be certain occasions in our life where we need to prioritize the events in our life. Then we are moving to next point. What is quality teaching? When we prioritize all these things as principles, we need to focus on a few aspects. Quality teaching, what is that? One is intellectual depth. To be an excellent teacher, intellectual depth should be there. When we were young, we know that when we ask some doubt, if the teacher is telling, I will give you the answer tomorrow, or if the teacher is telling, I don't know, how do we say? Or what do we say? Once the class is over, we will tell, we will come home and we will tell our brother or sister or even our parents. See, I asked this doubt and the teacher did not know. My teacher doesn't know the answer. What does it mean? The teacher's competency in that subject is not there. And that teacher's, the, the student's impression about that teacher has gone. It's very difficult to gain the trust again once it is lost. Second one, communicative competence. A teacher should be very good, very competent, not the word good. I'm using competent. That's what I told. Abilities should be transferred to competencies. Later, the competencies should be transferred to expertise. Now, communicative competence is required. Whatever you know, whatever you want to communicate, you should be a good communicator to your staff. You should be able to communicate with your parents in a very convenient and comfortable way. Sometimes we say no. See, that person is very good, but he doesn't know how to talk to the people. This principal is very good. Eh? She is a pavam lady, eh? but she doesn't know how to interact with the people. That sir is an excellent human being, excellent at heart. Eh? A person of high integrity, truth, this one, that one, and all, everything. But he doesn't know how to solve a problem. When the problem comes, he doesn't know how to convince the parents about it. Because of lack of communicative competence. We can, we can improve all these things. Another one, capacity for reflection. A person, see, John Dewey says that, John Dewey, a psychologist, he says that we don't learn from the experiences in our life. Mr. Prasid, do you agree with this sentence? Do you agree with me? Human being or we don't learn from our experience, but we learn by reflecting upon the experience we had. Which sentence is correct? First one or second one? Uh, I would like to go for the second one, sir. Thank you so much. Yes, right. The first one is, we normally say, no. See, what do we say? We learn from our experience. We don't learn anything. 
because the event happened and we just forgot because we found a solution, whatever is there, we found an alternative and that's gone. But a person who reflects upon the experience, whether it is good or bad, he had in his life, one who reflects upon that succeeds in his life because he knows how it came, when it came, why it came, what are the reasons, what is plan B if such event occurs again. So here also what I want to say is as a teacher, as a principal, we need to reflect, we need to have a capacity to reflect upon whatever happens. Self-knowledge, the knowledge that is required. Here self-knowledge means like self-awareness. We should be knowledgeable about my, that's why I showed you the slides in the beginning, you know, what is it? Scott analysis, my strength, my challenges, my threats and my, my opportunities. I should know what are these things and emotional intelligence. When I talk to you about emotional, emotional intelligence, I had a book here, okay, I'm not sure where it is, okay. Emotional intelligence, Goldman had written an, a, a book, very authentic book named, named uh, Emotional Intelligence. Just one second, it was somewhere here. Okay, yes, I'm sorry for that. Yes, see, the first and foremost or the most authoritative book on Emotional intelligence is this book. Emotional intelligence, it's written by Daniel Goldman. He says, what is emotional intelligence? Every principle, I would repeat, emotional intelligence, the book is written by Daniel Goldman. Most authenticated and authoritative book on emotional intelligence. I went through this in full detail because I had to do a session on emotional intelligence. So I studied about it, as I told, Every opportunity to sh should, should be turned to learn something new. When Mr. Prasid told me that, please, uh, we would like to do uh, something on leadership during crisis. So I started researching what is leadership? What are the aspects? What are the characteristics? What is a crisis? How can someone manage crisis? I started learning about it. I started studying about it. So likewise, emotional intelligence, every principle should have uh, should have emotional intelligence. I would like to define emotional intelligence and we are moving to the next point. What is emotional intelligence? Emotional intelligence is the capacity, number one, the word capacity. So every individual, if you are an employee, not necessarily a principal, but you should have the capacity. So what is it? Emotional intelligence is the capacity to understand my own emotions, as well as others' emotion, number one. Number two, to understand, so one, sorry, one is identify, to identify my emotions and others' emotion. Number two, one second, just one second. Yes, one is identifying my own emotions and others' emotion. Second one, is how to manage my emotions and how to manage others' emotions. So it's not only my own emotions. I should know, I should identify. For example, I'll give you an example, best example. For example, a parent who is short-tempered comes to my office. He is talking to me in a very rude manner. The first thing, a person who is emotionally intelligent should understand what is the emotion that I am undergoing. Am I calm and quiet? Am I composed? Or am I tensed? Am I undergoing a pressure because I cannot predict what this man will speak? I am identifying my own emotions. Number two, I am identifying others' emotion, the other person's emotion also. Okay, what is the emotion that he's undergoing? Is it hatred? Is it anger? Is it frustration? What is the problem? Second thing, I should be able to manage my emotion. I should know how to control myself in front of that parent. If you are also short-tempered and if you are also blasting in front of him, what's the difference between you as a principal or as a professional and the parent who came? You should know how to control and manage his emotions also. 
maybe if you don't react in a rude way if you are a very calm and quiet person you are asking that man yes okay what you told is correct please be seated let me listen to you first you are able to manage his emotions also this is what is called emotionally intelligent correct now please see the quote teaching kids to count is fine i repeat teaching kids to count is fine but teaching them what counts is best teaching kids to count is fine means we are teaching the children counting that's fine but teaching them what counts is best so when we when we impart education to our children we should always try to tell them about values that they have to uphold in their life values like integrity honesty sincerity truthfulness punctuality respect for others respect for elders respect for your parents respect for property lot of things and that should be given to the students through the living examples of teacher and the principal if you are shouting at the the children and the parents and if you are telling the children no see you should not get angry with others what will the implication what is the result now we are coming with coming to motivation only two more topics to go one is motivation closely related and the major topic of leadership crisis leadership during crisis what is motivation it's an inducement to act it's the process of making subordinates to act in a desired manner to achieve organizational goals so motivation is the process of making subordinates in an educational setup i don't prefer to use the word subordinates whereas i would like to address them as colleagues that is the best policy so it's a process of making our colleagues to act in a desired manner who desire who who designs the desired manner it's you as the head of the institution if you are the product manager if you are the country manager if you are the zonal manager if you are the regional manager if you are the coordinator if you are vice principal principal you design the desired manner to achieve the organizational goals so motivation is very important motivation helps to identify and satisfy the needs of human resources in an organization what is benefits of motivation motivation helps to improve performance levels of employees it helps to change negative attitude it helps to reduce employee turnover what is employee turnover the top that term is very important employee turnover means the number of people who leave your institution either by resignation or by termination so employee turnover means the number of people who leaves the institution whenever we whenever the whenever we evaluate the quality of institution the most important aspect in quality assurance is that the staff retention how effective is your policy to retain your staff how efficient are you to manage your institution then motivation reduces absenteeism in the organization and it helps managers to introduce changes smoothly yes this is a good thing to know according to abraham maslow's need hierarchy theory of motivation you know abraham maslow you might have studied in educational psychology or child psychology he is a well known psychologist he published a paper in 1943 about the theory of motivation and it was based on human needs within every human being there exists a hierarchy of five needs hierarchy of five needs what is that okay first one is you can see the the middle column okay first one look at the first column then sorry second one maslow's need hierarchy theory maslow's need hierarchy theory what is that first one is physiological needs every human being irrespective of his position physiological needs are very important that has to be satisfied first 
second one safety and security needs third one social needs social needs the belongingness feeling and esteem needs what is that self esteem his need to be fulfilled as he is a proud individual last one self actualization needs self actualization means according to your caliber the place where you need to reach that is the need of an individual now let's take the third the third column when we compare this with organizational examples minimum basic salary is the physiological needs of an employee after that job configuration provident fund pension that is required for an employee for a teacher as principals we need to assure that safety is given third one cordial relations in informal organization fourth one after that if you expect a better performance from the employee promotion and special status or titles to be given they should be promoted from teacher to senior teacher maybe to coordinator maybe to senior coordinator level coordinator last one is achievement of goal so leadership this is the last topic of this leadership is the process of influencing the behavior of people so we are coming to the topic the title leadership during crisis what is leadership it's the process of influencing the behavior of people we influence the behavior not influence just the people we influence the behavior of people by making them strive voluntarily towards achievement of organizational goals we make them strive voluntarily not by force so if you are a good leader you should be able to influence the behavior of your staff your staff members if you are a good leader you should be able to make them strive voluntarily when you are calling them for a for some duties without force and pressure they should come to you that is what defines you as a leader what is features of leader leadership leadership indicates ability of an individual to influence others if you are a good leader you should be able to influence others leadership tries to bring changes in the behavior of others leadership indicates interpersonal relations between leader and follower and if leadership is exercised it is exercised to achieve common goals of the organization not for individual goals leadership is a continuous process we cannot say that once this program is over once this academic year is over my duty is over or my leadership qualities are over no it's a continuous process importance of leadership stephen covey a famous management consultant says that managers are important but leaders are vital for lasting organizational success principals are important for an educational institution but leaders are vital very important for lasting organizational success if you are a good leader your success will last for your institution if you are just a principal the success may not last it might be momentary the leadership influences the behavior of people a leader maintains personal relations leader plays a key role in introducing required changes in the organization and a good leader can handle conflicts effectively qualities of a good leader we know that there are so many qualities of a good leader physical features some people say that the person should be 6 feet high some people say that he should be fair and handsome some people say that he should have beard some people say that he should have big mustache some people say that like hindi heroes and all clean shaven and very handsome so people's concepts are different whatever it is whichever features or whatever features and figure we have god has given to us to keep it to maintain it in a very polished manner is very important and knowledge integrity initiative communication skills motivation skills self confidence decisiveness social skills all these are some of the qualities of a good leader yes so this is not just one sentence i'll stop different styles of leaders are there one is autocratic leader what is that autocratic leader means 
the leader tells everything and his subordinates or employees they just listen to that there is no interaction and third one last one less fair leadership or free reign is the complete freedom is given to staff or the faculty whatever they say is the final answer for you the second one middle one is democratic or participative leadership what is that you you have your own opinion you accept others opinion finally you put up whatever you think ideal and for the betterment of the institution this is democratic you can see the interaction between subordinates and leader and this is laissez faire or free reign means there is more interaction between the colleagues between the subordinates not with the leader yes now this is something important for most of us the problem is in that we aim too high and fail as i told robinson crusoe robinson crusoe sorry robinson yeah, ken robinson ken robinson said for most of us the problem is that we aim too high and fail sometimes our children we say that we say that my child wants to be an engineer and he is not having the capacity he failed but he says it is just the opposite we aim too low and succeed that is the main problem we think that this year we have 500 students okay next year we should increase it to 550 or 600 students and we work only for that 50 per 50 students or 100 students we normally say no if you want to become a collector if you want to become a conductor your aim should be to become a collector when you prepare for becoming an ias officer you will be posted somewhere below that so always we should not aim too low and succeed and be satisfied whereas we should aim high and we should succeed uh just one sentence i would like to say concluding that um i think it's bill gates you know bill gates told once okay may i ask you something uh as principals as principals suppose you have a difficult task to be task to be done so who will you give it to as principals anybody can answer please any of the participants will you give it to a strict teacher will you give it to a good teacher will you give it to a lazy teacher will you give it to a very efficient teacher you have a difficult task to be done who will you give it to anybody will you give it to lazy teacher or will you give it to very very enthusiastic teacher very energetic teacher lazy. very boring teacher eh experienced teacher lazy what do you mean hello lazy teacher lazy teacher lazy teacher why sir could you please tell me why they they will be made more smart <laughs> yes that's true sir thank you so much thank you right you are correct so see if i if i borrow the words of bill gates he says that i will always give the most difficult task to the laziest employee in my firm in my country because he will find the easiest way to achieve the goal isn't it so a lazy person will find out the easy way to achieve so maybe that will be helpful for us which will be less time consuming so i would like to conclude saying that see we are always we are now at the moment we are going through a very a critical situation that is covid 19 pandemic we are fed up hearing about this term by everyone isn't it but as an educational institution we know that we are facing a lot of issues admissions parents are not coming to the school the fees problem we are unable to pay the salary to the staff maybe the management's expectations are too high from us and online classes quality completion of the syllabus 
and getting the students of class 10th and 12th ready for the board exam. So likewise, a lot of issues we are going through. And for all these, who is the person? It is the principal who is undergoing all this pressure. Nobody else is there to share. Here comes the importance of crisis management. Crisis management, what is that? The, it is the process by which an organization deals with a major event that threatens to harm the organization, its stakeholders or the general public. So crisis management is a process where the organization or, or an individual deals with a major event. And the crisis management, when we look at the cycle, first one starts with identification. Please be with me for... We will conclude. Five minutes more. Exactly 358. Crisis management cycle, the first one is identification. What is that? I'm not just... See, please don't look... I mean... Don't take only COVID-19 pandemic into consideration. When I'm telling crisis, any kind of crisis, for example, salary, salary payment, then fee remittance by the parents, quality, maintaining quality of the online classes, whatever is the issue, it's a crisis in front of you. So identification of the crisis, number one. Number two, once you identify the crisis, preparation, you prepare for the crisis. So we should see it in advance. For example, today it is today's 9th of September. The salary date is 28th or 29th of September for the staff. From now onward, prepare to deal with the issue of staff salary. How are you going to do? Second, third step is prevention. How can we prevent the issue that is going to happen. For example, the crisis of giving salary to the staff. We know we may not be able to. How can we prevent that crisis? Response. How will you respond to that with your policies? Maybe you are going to frame policies. You are going to respond to this crisis with, uh, with, with a uh, meeting with the management and coming out. Maybe you are going to conduct an online meeting with all the parents and convincing them the issue and recovery how will we recover now recovery this stage we can think of COVID-19 pandemic as well how will we recover from the current crisis how will we sort out the problem of maintaining quality teaching I told quality teaching is there in depth uh, intellectual in depth this one in communicative competence tech, tech, and I told many points how can we maintain that you are in the spotlight principal or the vice principal is in the spotlight. How? In this crisis period, in a crisis, everyone watches what you do. Parents are looking, what is the principal saying? What is the principal doing? Whether you like it or not, you are in the spotlight. I am in the spotlight as the principal. The key is getting out in front of the crisis in its first hours with clear statements, both internally and externally. Suppose you are anticipating a problem of parents' protest. You are there in the spotlight. I, I, I don't know any principal who is here who might have faced any issue, any parents uh, protest against collecting the fees from the children. If you are seeing it in front of you, immediately come out with a very clear statement, with a clear decision that this is what management or the school is planning to do before the protest burst out accept responsibility and build confidence and credibility. You please don't wash off your hands saying that this is the decision taken by the management. This is the decision taken by the PTA. Say that this is the decision as the head of the institution in consultation with the PTA and the management and stakeholders. I have taken the responsibility. Please, dear parents, be with me in this period of crisis. And you see how you gain the confidence of the parents. A crisis requires fast, confident decision making. But how do you make good decisions when events move so quickly, when things are confusing, when it is hard to sort out what is important? Managing emotions that accompany a crisis, effective yeah, leaders and yeah. taking effective action can help. How can we manage? The managing. 
is somebody asking me something i can hear some voice over the no okay so managing emotions that accompany a crisis effective leaders role and taking effective action can help crisis may be your defining point this is very important for everyone it can be your defining point the crisis you are facing inevitably will face may be defining point for your professional life a crisis will define who you are i conclude with the statement teaching is a very noble profession i use the same slide when i presented another theme on 22nd of august along with with uh, uh, password publishing house on 22nd the topic was i think strategic and functional approach towards real time schooling yes there i used the, this same slide as the concluding one because i love it please read individually you need to read teaching is a very noble profession that shapes the character caliber and future of an individual if the people remember me as a good principal if the school remember me as a good employee if the if the if the people remember me as a good manager that will be the best honor for me let us all try to be remembered by people as the best one because we are doing a noble profession may i take this opportunity to conclude this session and to thank once again our dear president of uh, central travancore sahodaya dr silas k ibrahim always i was i was uh, seeing him because his video cam was on switched on with a smiling face very much entertaining thank you so much sir for giving me an opportunity to share this platform with you and then another person who is getting ready for word of thanks uh, miss nisha ab ma'am who is cbsc city coordinator thank you so much ma'am and moreover mr prasid prasad who is heading as the product manager of password publishing house a good friend of mine may i give you a compliment uh, dear mr prasid you are an excellent organizer yes yesterday you no know, this morning mr mr jonichan paul called me sales executive of alappuzha region he asked me he told me that yes i hope mr prasid might be coordinating the program well i told not not in a good manner but in an excellent manner because a prop i mean very good communication is there there is no communication gap as to what is to be done when will we start who will be the people uh, uh, present how many what is the who is the target audience no doubt at all everything is very clear crystal clear i greatly thank you uh, mr prasid prasad for inviting me for this session on this platform and mr jonichan paul yes of course without say i know that even just i spoke to you hardly for 5 to 7 minutes but i know that you are a person with a full vigor and enthusiasm you are a dynamic employee a dynamic personality i could read it out thank you so much for giving me this opportunity and see we are using password this is uh, please this is uh, out of margin okay please put a margin and listen to me we we are also clients of password publishing house our school is having crescent public school we are so satisfied as you know just with my uh, experience abroad my exposure and all when i choose a book i am very particular that uh, it should be a quality book my students should get benefit from that and we are very happy and proud to say that we are the clients of password publishing house we are so happy i have taken the feedback from my teachers we are so happy about the book the quality that you maintain and mr jonichan paul was telling that next year you are coming uh, coming up with to more products incorporated with the technology and uh, other devices maybe other methods tools thank you so much and we wish you all the best dear office bearers of uh, central tribune course hodia and dear participants once again thank you so much and have a great evening and a great time ahead god bless you thank you uh, thank you very much sir uh, before we move to the word of thanks uh, it would be great if uh, two people from the participants if you can give a very small um, feedback about the session uh, that would be really great so uh, you have an option to unmute yourself uh, two participants you have the time to give a small feedback about uh, the session
Hello, everyone. We have time. Uh, we have time to listen to two uh, two people. So great uh, if two people could give a feedback about the session. Good evening, all. I'm Dr. Prasanna Kumari, Principal St. Mary's Public School, Mathura, and Vice President, uh, CDC. I think I'm audible to all. Yes, ma'am. You're audible. Okay. So uh, the class was very interesting, and I've studied all this when I was doing my MBA class. Actually, uh, all the principals should have the leadership quality, and uh, more classes should be given to them to lead uh, schools very nicely. And uh, Professor Dr. Um, George Sir has uh, done his part very well, and he has explained very nicely and i think it did, uh, we, this class was very useful to all so thanks to sir and thanks for the coordinator and uh, thanks to silas sir for arranging such classes okay that's all thank you uh, thank you ma'am uh, can we have one more person with a feedback Silas, sir, would you like to speak something? See, it was a wonderful uh, session, and I really, uh, I was interested. Uh, I, I really thank uh, George, sir, for uh, taking a class like this. Thank you very much on behalf of our uh, Central Triangle Savatya. Yeah, thanks a lot, sir. And thank you very much, uh, uh, Password Publishers Publishing House and uh, its product manager, uh, Mr. Prasid and uh, Jonichan. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We move on to the word of thanks by Ms. Uh, Nisha B. Uh, she is a principal of uh, Newman Central School, and uh, she's also the CBSE uh, Patanadita City Coordinator. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Prospected President, Dr. Silas K. Abraham, Chief Guest Professor, Dr. George Kalanjeri, Mr. Prasad Prasad, Product Manager, Sri Jonathan Paul, and all representatives of the Passport Publishing House and my beloved principals. A very warm good, good evening to one and all. Technology has integrated into every classroom now as it has evolved as the paper and pen of our time. And it is the lens through which we experience our form. We all know we are all aware of the crisis which the pandemic has thrust upon the world in general and to the field of education in particular. And to tackle, tackle the situation, we need effective leadership. Today, we are very fortunate to have Dr. George Kalanjeri as a resource person who has shared the strategies for effective leadership during this crisis. He has in a way um, uh, very uh, simple simple way so that we could all understand it. On behalf of all the officials and members of Central Travanko Sahodia Complex, I extend our warmest gratitude to you, sir. Saila, sir, the captain of our ship, is always on the lookout for providing us something new in arranging regular training. We won't forget that you have arranged us, surely, ma'am, on the topic being a little teacher towards the beginning of school pandemic day of leadership during half of all principles I extend our sincere gratitude to you sir. Let me thank Mr. Prasad Prasad, the product manager of uh, Password Publishing Company, Sri Jonathan Paul, and all the representatives who have supported in organizing and coordinating such a beautiful event. I would also thank our Vice President of CTSC, Prasina Kumari Ma'am, the Secretary, George Vergi Sir, the Treasurer, Sahadevan Sir, and all executive members for supporting our President to arrange this wonderful program. Let me thank all my fellow principals for joining in this session at the right time and take home the essence of this class. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma'am. Thank you. And uh, principals, I have a very small request before you uh, opt out from Zoom. Uh, it would be great if you can give a comment in the chat box. Thank you very much. Have a great evening.
Yes, dear friends. Yes, as Mr. Prasid told, yeah. Could you please, if you don't mind, please put whatever impression you have. The session was good, not good. It was boring. It was interesting. It was informative. It was excellent. Whatever you feel, please feel free to put a comment in the chat box so that I can improve in the next session. At the same time, I can get inspired by your comment as well if it is something positive. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Hello. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Uh, uh, how many participants were there from uh, our uh, association? Can you tell me? Uh, sir, uh, definitely. Um, I'll give you the exact numbers uh, very soon. But my understanding is that close to 35 to 36 participants uh, from your Sahodaya might have joined. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Benny, sir, are you there? Dr. Benny Vargis from Muscat? No, he has left, I think. Okay. 